In this video, we're going to talk about variable costing. Now, in our last video, when we discussed absorption costing, we talked about how manufacturing firms basically have two different ways uh, of calculating product costs. So we have the absorption costing method and the variable costing method, and now we're going to drill down and focus on variable costing. So bear in mind, again, that we've got two different ways to classify these product costs. One is we can just say all four of these, direct materials, direct labor, variable overhead per unit, and fixed overhead, we can say that all four of those are classified as product costs. When we talk about product costs, we're talking about costs that attach themselves to the product. They're inventoriable costs. And then we've also got the variable costing method, which we're going to deal with now, where we just say, well, just these three are going to be classified as product costs. And you say, well, wh which one's missing? Well, we're actually the fixed overhead. Under the variable costing method, which we're talking about now, fixed overhead is not going to be a product cost. It is instead going to be a period cost. So we'll just say fixed overhead is going to be a period cost. And what do we mean by that? Well, if you remember, SG&A is another type of period cost. And SG&A is just expensed as it's incurred, right? We're not actually attaching SG&A expense to the product and having it flow through inventory and through cost of goods sold. We're not doing that. If SG&A is 50000 we just expense 50000 And that's what we're going to do with variable costing with the fixed overhead. We're just going to say fixed overhead. We're just going to expense it as it's incurred. We're not going to treat it as a product cost. It's not going to flow through inventory. We're not going to deal with it that way. Now, just a, a brief little aside. Again, absorption costing is used for external purposes, and, and that must mean, obviously, then that variable costing exists uh, more because it's useful for internal purposes, for like decision making for managers. And we're going to get into why the, th this little subtle difference of treating fixed overhead as a period cost would actually uh, be better for internal decision making. Uh, but first, let's actually let's actually walk through our example. So we'll, we'll use the same example as we did when we talked about absorption costing. We'll say that we have a firm. Uh, you, you have a firm that makes hot air balloons. And the sales price for each hot air balloon, you, you sell them at $80,000 a piece. And you're going to use the variable costing method in terms of computing your product costs and ultimately putting together your income statement. Now, we're going to need some, some basic info. And we'll say in quarter one, we're just going to look at two quarters here. Quarter one, you sell 10 hot air balloons and you produce 10. So you sell 10, you make 10. But in quarter two, is going to be a little different. You're going to sell 10 hot air balloons again, so sales haven't changed, but you're going to make 20 hot air balloons. You're actually going to produce or manufacture 20 of them, so you're going to have some in, in, left over in inventory. So this is a subtle difference, uh, but let's just go ahead and, and let's work through this. So when we think about how our cost structure is going to look, we'll say that we have these different costs here. So when we look at our direct materials cost, it's 25000 That means that we're actually going to put $25,000 of direct materials into producing a hot air balloon. Direct labor is $10,000. Variable overhead per unit is $2,000. Now, the fixed overhead is going to be on a per quarter basis. So what does this $60,000 mean? That means in quarter one, there's $60,000 of fixed overhead. In quarter two, there's another $60,000 of fixed overhead. So how will we go about computing our product cost per unit? Because we're going to need to know that in order to make an income statement, right? Because we're going to say, okay, well, we made 10 units, but then we sold 10. So 10 are going to flow through cost of goods sold. What's our per unit product cost in order to compute cost of goods sold? So all we do is we just take this per unit direct material and we just move that over, right? If we say in quarter one, what is our direct material per unit is going to be 25,000. That's just given right here, right? So it's just the same thing. And we're just looking per unit basis and we're going to sum these all up. However, when you look and you say, okay, each of these comes over, well, we see fixed overhead does not. And this is the difference with the variable costing method. We just got X's there because we're not going to include fixed overhead as a product cost. It's not going to be part of the product cost. It's going to be a period cost. We're going to deal with that later. 
So when we think on a per unit basis of what's the product cost, it's going to be $37,000 in each quarter, the exact same amount, which makes sense because nothing's changed about our cost structure. It hasn't become more expensive to purchase the materials to make hot air balloons. Nothing has changed. So basically, in each quarter, we got 37000 of product costs. Now, when we go to do our cost of goods sold, we'll say, okay, quarter one, we moved out 10 units, right? We sold 10 units. I mean, 10 units are going to flow through cost of goods sold. So we'll just multiply the 10 by 37,000. That will give us our cost of goods sold. So that's just a little preview. Now let's look at that income statement. Now you see, well, let me just start with the gross margin and the cost of goods sold, the basics. So you see that 37,000, remember, we just said we just multiply that by the number of units that were sold and flowed through cost of goods sold in each period. In each period, it's 10, right? We, we, that was just given. We talked about that before. We sold 10 units in each, in each quarter. 10 times 37,000 is going to be 370,000. And if you're wondering how I got the sales at 800,000, remember we said the sales price is just going to be given at $80,000 a balloon. So we take 10 times 80,000, that's 800,000 because we sold 10. 10 times 37,000 gives us 370,000. And again, that 37 came right here where we calculated our, our per unit product cost. Now we just do a little subtotal. Remember our gross margin is just our sales minus our cost of goods sold. And in each period, the gross margin is exactly the same because nothing has changed about our cost structure. Now, let's get back to that fixed overhead. You say, okay, well, what about that? We're just ignoring that under variable income cost what, or variable costing? Well, no, we're not completely ignoring it. Remember, we said we're going to treat it as a period cost. So we're going to subtract it, but it's after, it's not part of cost of goods sold, right? It's a separate line item, right? So it's not attaching to the product and, and flowing through as we sell inventory. We're just expensing it as it comes up. And it was 60000 in each quarter, right? So we take 60000 in each quarter as an expense. And then now here, our net income is 370000 in each quarter. So how does this, how can we think about this? Well, we think, well, okay, we have the same exact profitability. If we're a manager and we're looking at this, we're saying we've got the same profitability, which makes sense, right? Because we have the same sales. We sold 10 balloons in each quarter. And we have the same exact cost structure. Nothing changed. It didn't get more or less expensive to make these balloons. So basically, that this you might be thinking, well, duh, this makes perfect sense. But remember that under absorption costing, actually our cost of goods sold was going to be different in each quarter. When we work through those examples, uh, we actually, because in quarter two, we actually produced more units. Remember, we produced 20 balloons in quarter two. Even though we sold 10 in each quarter, we sold 10. We made 10 in quarter one, but we made 20 in quarter two. So that meant that our inventory built up, and then that fixed overhead under absorption costing, that 60000 in fixed overhead was being spread over a greater number of units. So some of it was getting stuck in inventory for some future period, which meant that right now the fixed overhead was lower. It was part of cost of goods sold, so you couldn't really see it unless you broke it out. But the advantage of the variable costing is we're saying, hey, we're not going to sit here and play games and, and spread this fixed overhead. Uh, into. We're not going to capitalize it and, and part, put it as part of inventory because that can you know change the way we see the profitability of each quarter. It actually made quarter two look more profitable uh, because we were spreading that fixed overhead over some future periods that hadn't happened yet. And so under the under the absorption costing, uh, the, the actual profitability was higher. But really, there was no difference, right? Because remember, we just talked about we have the same sales, we have the same cost structure. So this variable costing income statement is much better at giving us information to managers and saying, well, how profitable were we? How did each quarter compare to the other one? And this is actually perfectly compatible when we go to do our cost volume profit, our CVP analysis. We're not going to have the same kind of issues that we have with absorption costing when we have changes in inventory and, and having difficulty predicting our profitability and, and those types of things. And now the best part about variable costing is that managers can't, artificially make profitability seem higher. They can't monkey around with the bottom line by just ramping up their their production. Remember, under absorption costing, because of that, that issue with fixed overhead being part, 
being part of cost of goods sold and being an inventoryable cost, a product cost, the more the manager produced, the higher number of units meant that the fixed overhead was going to be spread over more units, so it would be lower per unit, which meant that then when we go to say, okay, well, for a given quarter, we say, okay, we, we actually produced more than we sold, it would say that it would actually make us look more profitable. The net income would actually be higher because we were deferring some of those fixed overhead costs to a future period. So the manager could go and play games and say, well, I'll just produce an extra five or extra 10 odd air balloons. I'll look more profitable. The firm looks more efficient. We got a lower per unit cost. Everything's looking great. But actually, you're building up inventory, and you might not even need that inventory. You might have to write it down later. So that's why, in terms of decision making, this variable costing income statement, this variable costing method, is actually superior in many ways in terms of making better decisions for our firm. And really, the only advantage of the absorption costing over the, the variable costing is that that's the one that's traditionally used uh, for external reporting purposes and that auditors are going to demand and so forth.